Hey everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog, and I'm very interested to see if Apple's new $300-ish dollar tablet can handle 4K video, and we're going to try it out with the very capable Luma Fusion editing application on the iPad, paired with some 4K 30 frames per second 8-bit video for my Lumix GH5 camera. So unlike the iPad Pro, which has an actual USB-C port, which allows for a vast array of different hubs, or even just plugging into your camera to transfer data, the iPad 10.2 needs a Lightning to SD card dongle, or else I could upload to Google Drive and download it. But surprisingly, this adapter was only $11 from Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description to it, and it works pretty well. Once I inserted the SD card, I went into the Files app, which has a little bit better thumbnail support than the Photos app, located the file I was going for, and saved it to my photo library, and then imported it into LumaFusion to start editing. And as for my setup, I've been using the Logitech Keys to Go and the Anywhere Mouse 2S, a little teaser of a future iPad setup video, so stay tuned for that. But with iPadOS mouse support, I am ready to go, uh, and this is really easy and convenient to edit. And I was actually blown away. Even with the highest resolution playback turned on, this multi-year old processor played back the media perfectly. Not a single dropped frame from what I could tell, and I'm not sure what kind of sorcery this is, but it blew my expectations away. It edited the video very well. When I reversed a clip, which takes a bit of time in this application, it took 4 minutes and 5 seconds on the iPad 10.2 versus 342 on my iPad Pro. Not a huge difference. When exporting this 1 minute 4K clip on medium settings, it took a minute 25 on the iPad 10.2 and 48 seconds on the iPad Pro. A big difference, but also still pretty good for the price and processor difference. So while the iPad 10.2 doesn't have USB-C and all of its capabilities with that, doesn't have as fast a processor or as nice a screen, it still has iPadOS external drive support, mouse support, and Apple's chip architecture, which somehow still makes 4K video editing a breeze. You can also use an Apple Pencil or a Logitech Crayon for editing, which works really well too, much better than using your finger would. Just don't get a 32 gigabyte iPad. If you're planning on also editing video, you're gonna run out of storage pretty quickly. But yeah, so the moral of this story is that this was impressive. Uh, I wouldn't really have issues editing video here and there with this iPad. I mean, storage is going to be an issue, and it's still not going to be as snappy when it comes to exports and changing settings and frames within this app. But just in terms of the actual edit process and playing back the video, this does a great job. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.